Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween! Hi everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk PMA. Today we have a super special episode. We are going to be cooking up new teams. Cheesy garlic, parmesan, spinach, spaghetti, squash. Um, that is a mouthful and It half. is, that's why I had to read it. So being part of being an athlete is eating well and getting nutritious food that is going to get your body the nutrients that it needs, the proteins, the good foods that we need. So today we're going to show you a recipe that we're trying for the first time, but because we're working on our journey of getting stronger, lifting weights, building muscle, losing fat, um, we are trying to eat healthy as well. So um, it is exciting and it's fun and it's fun to try new recipes. So we're going to try one today with you. What's the first step? So the first step, we're going to bake our spaghetti squash. We're going to put a little, drizzle a little bit of olive oil in there and spread it around. And then we're going to put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 40 minutes. And just pour it in there. Spread it all around. Make sure you're getting all the spots. Make a mess while you do it. Um, that's why they call me messy Jess. I don't think anybody has ever called you messy. Jesse. Um, actually, that's not true. Just not since I've been an adult and you've been around. All right, that's all spread around. And pop that in the oven upside down. Let's turn those upside down. You don't salt them or anything. It doesn't say to. We can. Let's put salt on them. Let's put salt on them. Oh, what kind of salt are you using, Ellen? Of course, salt. You gotta season every part. Makes it better if it's not. If it's not. If it's not. Turn it upside down. If it's not what? If it's not good, you need to have seasoning. If it's bland, you don't want bland food. Oh, and you won't want to eat it. Take the sticker off. Yeah, take your sticker off. Maybe. Oh my gosh. So, um, you've had some changes going on with you. You've been building your own elite basketball team here in Tri Cities, right? Yes. How long do I put this in here for? 40 minutes. Um, how's that been going? Um, uh, building a new team is challenging to say the least. And uh, just like cooking, you have to break it down, and it takes time to bake. Yeah. So um, it does. It's a slow progress, and um, you know it doesn't matter what kind of talent that you have or what um, type of kids that you have. It's going to be a challenge no matter what. Um, and so it just takes time, and you have to really break it down. And I coach. Apparently, I coach very differently than um, a lot of the Tri Cities athletes have ever had before. So, Why? what do you mean? Um, I guess I just coach more. I'm a more elite coach than what is around here. So that, I don't know what does that mean. Probably just um, more pressure, and I mean, I coach them like they're in high school or they're in college. You know, doing. The harder things in basketball, which I don't think that a lot of make sure that I am in it. <laughs> um, but I don't think that a lot of coaches coach the younger kids, you know, the third through eighth graders, in that same manner. Um, it was a lot like that in Arizona. We all mm -hmm. were very intense and, you know, pushing them to do the challenging things and to. Um, you know, play the more challenging teams and things like that. Um, but I've noticed that it's not exactly the same here like that. So how do the kids react to it? I mean, if they've never experienced that and they're not up to, say, the skills that you're teaching, how are they responding to that? I think they're responding pretty well. Um, it's just getting them to understand that they have to keep asking me questions. And it's okay to get confused, but they have to just keep trying they have to keep attempting and that's what i you know we had a tournament this last weekend that's what i told them all weekend was that you need to attempt 
-hmm. I tell you to do something, I want you to attempt it. And if you attempt it, then we're good. I'm happy and we'll keep making adjustments. But if you don't even try or you don't even listen, then that's when we have a problem. You know, that's something different. Mm -hmm. Um, So it just takes time. And these girls have a lot of talent and they absolutely are going to get to the place that they need to get to. But um, it's just going to take a little bit of time. But you have an extra added challenge on that, too, because you are, have girls that have never played together before, right? Yeah. And yeah. some that haven't even played in, like, even AAU teams before, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but, I mean, that's every team that you coach. It's going to be different. Um, and when they get older, too, you know, there's added, there's always going to be added girls to the team. So I might have this team for a year, mm-hmm. but, or even next season, um, more girls are going to join. And the season after that, more girls are going to join. Some are going to leave, you know? And so it's just going to be like, it's to just keep the core. And if you get the core and they understand what needs to happen, it makes it easier for the next girls to step up and for them to understand faster Mm -hmm. Um, because you already have like those girls who get it and they're, they're able to be another coach to help explain and, and assess. Right. So what do you do to help build your team? Like to get them to bond together? Um, We actually had a whole team bonding practice. (laughs) So um, I think team bonding comes with practices. I think tournaments are probably one of the best things that any AAU or any team can do Mm -hmm. because tournaments teach or well, you tournaments, you spend so much time together. Like, point blank that's your team bonding itself Mm -hmm. you play four games or more together you're spending literally two full days with each other and you're playing a sport like you're playing your sport together so you're learning every single game and every minute of every game you're learning something new about your teammates Mm -hmm. and uh, in between games you're spending time with them and after games you're spending time with them we went and had a lunch like a light lunch before our first game So, and all the girls sat together so that they can get to know each other more. And so, I mean, I saw leaps and bounds of team bonding with these girls while we were playing in this tournament, um, just in the team bonding alone. So, but yeah, tournaments are probably one of the biggest things that you can do to really encourage that team bonding. And team bonding just takes time. Uh, They have to learn to trust to each other. They have to learn to touch trust your coach they will have to learn to trust trust the plays and but you did something that you told me the other day that you know because the girls didn't even know their names and you kind of sat down with them and went over the goals and just kind of got them excited about and getting to know each other what did you do and why you tell me that i'm gonna mince up some garlic to put in our so yeah so while we had a practice where i did our pre-practice or pre-practice, pre-game exercises, which goes over the four C's, you know, where's your head at today? Um, What's holding you back? Um, Going over affirmations and going over your goals. So all the girls set their goals, set their affirmations um, and got to know each other a lot better. And then we played games, Um, team building games. Like we played like a caterpillar game where if we're standing back to back, there's a ball in between us and it's, like all the way down the line with, you know, five or more girls and each line and they have to walk down and back with the balls. And if they drop, then they have to start all the way back over. Mm-hmm. And so we did a couple of different games like that. And that was really fun. And just after that one practice, it was really cool to just see them. Um, like the gym wasn't quiet anymore. <laughs> it was loud and they were talking to each other and they were enjoying each other. And the little clicks, I guess you can say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the the little clicks, they were um, separating, I guess. And so now when we do partner thing, it's not just like who you came in with. It's more separated and more like combined. Mm-hmm. Grab this one all the way over here. Oh, I was looking for that one. Right in the corner. Yeah. What's next? So what we're doing here, we're um, we're gonna drizzle in some a little bit more olive oil. Um, we're gonna cook up some garlic, minced garlic, and some spinach. So I did a clove and a half 
of just real garlic. You can get the jarred garlic too. Um, and we will put the recipe in our um, notes below too. So you guys can have this if you think it sounds good. We sure think it sounds good. We'll see how it goes. Well, I don't even know what we're making. Uh, yeah. So um, now we're going to do five ounces of fresh spinach chopped. So we're going to chop up some garlic or some spinach, excuse me. And then this spinach is about to head out the door. That's about it. Um, I love how you don't, the girls didn't know each other before they came, at least the majority of them. It's, it's all a brand new team. And I love going and watching, you know, you had a tournament this weekend and just, you know, after every game, just watching how they're changing and watching the little things that they're doing better and improving and, you know, the parents understanding that that's just part of the process of getting to know each other and starting a new team. You know, it's just, it's kind of like cooking. Like we don't know what we're cooking up yet. You know, we don't know how it's going to turn out. But we just keep following directions and we just keep, you know, being maneuvering patient. and being patient because eventually it's going to come together and um, be amazing. And, you know, by the end of your season, as the girls keep understanding that they are improving and giving themselves a little break to um, understand that and recognize their successes, they're going to continue to get better because they are recognizing and and we're going to put that in with the garlic and saute that up a little bit. Yeah, and it's also, it's not even just watching the the athletes learn and grow, too. It's watching the parents. And, you know, our first tournament together, we learned a lot about all the parents. Um, for the most part, all the parents are pretty good. Um, it's hard when you join a new team. And of course you want to go and see your kid play. And of course you want them to succeed and you want them to be given the opportunities. Um, but it can also be construed a little bit to, what am I trying, what is the word I'm trying to say? Everyone has high expectations and everyone wants to see their kid play, like you said. And so it gets frustrating as a parent when your kid's not playing, right? Yeah. So I think that's where that's where it kind of gets to the point where, you know, parents have to be as patient as the kids. Yeah. And when they show that they're not patient and that they want to see, you know, them playing all the time and not seem like maybe girl really doesn't want to play yet. Yeah. Maybe she's scared to death to get out on yeah. the court because she's not confident enough. And if you as a parent, all you want is your kid to be out on the court, well, maybe you have to see the other side. Yeah. You have to, I think a lot of times as parents tend to be not really realistic about their athlete's level. And um, they also don't understand that I see a side of them that the parents would never see. Right. And that they probably would never admit to their parents. You know, I absolutely had girls this weekend when I said, are you ready to go in? And they looked at me like they were going to poop their pants. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that immediately tells me you're not ready. And I'm just going to give you some more time to simmer, you know, simmer and to, <laughs> um, you know, watch and ask questions and read the directions, you know, yeah, to ask. take time um, so you can make sure that you don't, you know, you don't mess up. You don't add too much salt. Yeah. You don't, you know, that you're seasoned correctly before you go in. And so um, that I think that's something that parents absolutely have to understand. And um, another thing, too, is I, with my team, obviously, I'm very, like, we are teaching mental toughness. We are, we are a positive environment. And we are... Um, you know, working on the mental side of everything along with the physical. Mm -hmm. And 
I think as soon as you put in there, it is mental and it is, as soon as you put in that, it is like you're putting, you're working the mental side of it and you put that it's a positive environment. They think that there's not going to be any yelling, that it's going to be even playing time that, yeah. you know, so then parents get this uh, image in their head that their kid's going to be playing, you know, as much as everybody else and that there's never going to be any kind of that reprimand. Okay, so we cut up a little more spinach. It is five ounces of spinach, so you want quite a bit of spinach in there. It's um, going to wilt. It's going to wilt more and condense itself. And so you want to get a good amount in there. We're not chefs by any means, but we, we can cock some good recipes, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we make up some good recipes. How's that? Um. Back to, you know, the girls and back to being an athlete, you know, like we had a discussion yesterday about, you know, kids not showing up or they're, they're showing up on the court, but they're not showing up mentally. And how does that affect the team? How does that affect the coach? How does that, you know, how does that work? And especially when, you know, you are building mental toughness and um, like you said, if you tell people that you are teaching and having a positive environment or a mentally tough environment, mentally tough does mean having to deal with being yelled at, mm -hmm. being confronted that you did make a mistake. Now let's learn from it. It's not a negative thing by any means, but it's a learning. Yeah. So mentally being mentally tough means that, Hey, I acknowledge that I didn't show up today. I acknowledge that I was tired or that I kept making mistakes and I didn't know what to do. And okay, so now what do I do? Yeah. Help me to understand what I did wrong and to learn from that. That's yeah. mentally tough. Now being not mentally tough means that you just shut down. That you know, you get yelled at by your coach and then you shut down, you cry, you don't understand what you did wrong and you don't want to understand what you did wrong or understand what your outside influences are doing to you. Or and they, you just say, I don't care. Right. I'm going to do it the way that I want to do it. Exactly. And, and, I, just as good. and I think that, so now we're going to add in a half of cup of heavy cream. Add that right in there. And then we're going to put in some cream cheese. Now, the cream cheese, they say, is optional, but it does make it a little more yummier. So, we're all about being yummy. And that says one tablespoon. I'm going to say that's one tablespoon. We're just going to go for it. Perfect. Um, not, the whole, yeah. not the whole cube, but just a little bit piece of it. Just to add a little. And cream cheese is, has good fats in it. It's not a bad... As long as you like everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. We are all about mindful eating and everything in moderation because if you are craving something, obviously, if you don't give yourself that craving, you're just going to keep craving it more. And then you're going to just eat a bunch of other things that aren't going to satisfy you. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you do eat what makes you feel good and what you are craving. But you can't, you got to be, eat it in moderation, be, be right? In, you got to, you aren't going to go, if you, okay, I'm craving Doritos. I'm not going to go and eat the whole bag of chips. I'm going to eat the serving size. Or I'm going to eat enough until I'm actually feeling full. Or I'm going to, also, I'm going to check myself. So while I'm eating it, I'm going to stop. I'm going to say, am I still hungry? Or am I bored? Or am I eating from some sort of emotion? Yes. So am I actually feeling hungry or... Am I trying to feed an emotion, mm -hmm. which that's not the right way to do it. So, well, and being mindful too of um, things to stay away from, like, you know, a large amount of sugars, um, wheat. Um, well, that's, this is what you choose that you want to stay away from. There are good sugars for you. 
not everybody wants to stay away from wheat, um, but finding alternatives for those things that you do. Like I am gluten free. You do absolutely struggle with a lot of different foods that don't make you feel good. Mm -hmm. So you have to take that time to, um, but you there, know, take you know, there are those studies though that say that those things are not healthy for you and they're hard to digest. So just be mindful of that. Do do your study. It's all about what works for you. And right now, I'm excited to pour that over my... What did you put in here? Oh, I'm so sorry. I put a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then I sprinkled in some mozzarella cheese as well. Do you want to put the cherry tomatoes in here, too? Is there some in there? Yeah. So the Allie doesn't call for it, but we have some cherry tomatoes, so we're going to go and throw those in there just to give it a little extra. I, I want to say I might have thrown those. New up. teams, baking up new teams is cooking. A cooking up new teams. You know, it's it's a challenge, and every coach every year, every season could have a new team. And learning those little tricks of, you know, team bonding experiences, um, having them get to know each other, um, setting goals together. Team goals are huge to build together because that means everyone has to be on the same page as far as what is their role um, on the team that's going to create um, that positive um, outcome. Sorry, that positive outcome that is going to that's going to get to that team goal, that high team goal, and everyone has their piece in that. Adding so I'm going to add some tomatoes. Italian seasoning, maybe. Some garlic. Oh, we haven't even tried it. Oh yeah, it definitely needs seasoning. You want some, some seasoning? Add some salt to it. I don't want that. That's too strong. I'm gonna add some cherry tomatoes, some garlic powder, some Italian seasoning. You can season up any way you'd like. These are our favorites. Give it some zing. Some zang. My favorite salt. What are you going to do now with your team to help build them even more? I mean, they are a very young, very um, beginner team. Um, so how do you, I know that, you know, they did lose their games this weekend, but how do you keep their, um, how do you keep them from getting upset about losing the way they are at this point to keep their heads up to get them to keep going to move forward um i don't set the expectation that it, we're we're here to win of course we love winning you know like you play sports and you want to win like that's just part of it sure but um i never set the expectation i'm like i think we can win and i and there's no reason we shouldn't but as long as you give me, and I tell them this every day, and I make them, I've made them repeat it back to me as well. Like, what do I expect from you guys? You give me 110%, and um, you attempt, mm -hmm. right? You attempt everything that I give you. Every challenge that is presented to you, and I ask you to, you know, change or adjust or whatever, whatever I give you, I want you to go out there and I want you to try. And that is all you have to do. And I will be happy. Mm -hmm. I don't care if we win. I don't care if we lose. Because that will come in time. You're not going to win your first games unless right. you're playing some really bad teams. And so, um, you know, it's just like next time. Like how much did we grow this weekend? We grew substantially. And they all knew that too. And so I think when coaches have the expectation of we're going to win, we have to win, we have to win, we have to win. Mm -hmm. And I'm pissed when I when we lose then yeah i don't want to play right doesn't make me want to play but like for me of course i want to win and of course there are times where i do get pissed if, if it's a game that we absolutely could have should have you would have you know like right. won, yeah or like we just completely didn't show up then yeah i'm gonna be frustrated and yeah we're gonna have like a talk you know like there's gonna be so you're just in the learning phase. Yeah, right no, now. we're not there yet. And so, so it's just it's just keeping them in the space of it's not about the wins. 
And I think that this next weekend, so we played the same team this last weekend twice. We're playing that same team this next weekend. Oh, really? And so um, they could bring a fire to them. I'm going to, you know, when they find that out, I'm going to say it's the same team. You're not going to lose to me three times. Go. Yeah. You know, it's time to pedal to the metal. You know, it's time to get the work done. Yeah. And I mean, they're, they're just learning and there's, I don't think any coach should truthful, truthfully ever be so mad about the wins and loss unless you're in college or you're professional. Sure. I don't think, I think any kind of club shouldn't be like that. High school even, I don't think it really should be that. Any kind of school sports shouldn't really be like that. Yes, we want to get better. Yes, we want to win. But that's not what this is all about. Well, high school, you want to get to the championship. Yeah, you know, there's always those. There, but there's always a championship. Yeah. AAU has a championship. There's a state championship sure. in Washington for AAU. But I think what you're saying is what what I would take from it, you know, if, if you have a team that you've they've been together since they were young and they've built together and they've grown together and they, they're amazing, yeah, then you have that expectation of we should win because we're that good, right? But but if you have a new team like you do, like you're saying, then that expectation, you have to bring it down just a little bit. You always, like you said, you always want to win. But that expectation is, I want to see you grow. I want to see you by the end of the season start winning a couple games. Yeah. Like the first game you win, we're going to be on top of the world. Yeah. But that just means that we have to work that much harder because we know now that we have that skill and that we can meet that expectation. No, I mean, for sure. And, like, every team is different. And so that's why it's, like, you know, my one of my old teams, like, yeah, I would have been mad at them if they would have blown out like they like this team did this weekend. But that's because I'd been with them for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been with them for over a year, and we've been playing seasons on seasons seasons together. But it was the same thing. When I first got them, it wasn't about the wins. Yeah, I wanted to win. And yes, I put it in their heads like, you should be winning this. And I do the same thing with this team. You should be winning this. You have every um, skill and talent and um, tool to be able to win. But that's not what this is about, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we just have to keep going. We have to keep going. There's no stopping. And so, and some kids will stop. And that's just, that's just sports. Some kids will well, stop and, and some kids will say, ah, there's a better team I can go play for and I'll go do it. And that's partly parents too. I mean, parents get frustrated because they're not winning or they don't think the coach is doing the right thing or, you know, whatever their thoughts are on that. And so that just comes and goes. But then there, you know, there's a lot of parents that are like, hey, we get that you guys are new. We get that, you know, you guys are improving every game. And by the end of the league, you know, season, they're going to be like a totally different team. Yeah. And kind of going back to what we had talked about with the parents earlier is it's about, it is about the team. And yes, you want your own child to succeed and you have your expectations for your child, but especially for basketball, like specifically basketball, it is about the team. A hundred thousand percent. There is nothing There's else no to it. I in team. I tell, <laughs> I specifically tell my kids, I do not care about your personal stats, especially not during a game. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, I might say, hey, like, you should have, be having 10 times more rebounds than you did. You should have, you should be scoring this many points a game. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, like, keeping track of, right. you know, and tallying the stats because I don't care about your personal stats, especially not in, like, this young age. No one, no one should care. We want them to learn how to play as a team because if they can't learn how to play as a team now, they can't do it in high school. They right. won't do it in college. They won't go any further. They, if they can't do it in high school, they won't do it in college. They well, won't go to college. It's learning, you know, and, and you should be progressing and learning after every game, after every practice. And as a parent, if you aren't seeing that your child's improving, you need to talk to the coach and say, hey, I don't see any, you know, yeah. progression. Do you? You know, and don't take it all upon, oh, they need to be amazing because they're not. They're still learning. But as a parent, look at your kid. Like, how did she do last game compared to this game? And or last practice compared to this practice. Like, what am I seeing her improvements on? Yeah. Or whatever. And 
being a parent and seeing that puts a different perspective in there. And it's not all about, oh, she's not getting her playing time or oh, she's, you know, the coach isn't doing what I think they should be doing because they're not working. It's not working. Um, it is about the team and yeah. giving the coach permission to do what they think is best for the team. Yeah. Well, and <clears throat> if you have questions, come to the coach. Actually, first, after talk to your athlete. <laughs> talk to your athlete after the game. If they can answer your question, then you're not listening and you're not paying attention. If your athlete doesn't know, either they don't want to tell you or they actually don't know and you need to go talk to the coach and calmly respectfully have a conversation with the coach mm -hmm. point blank and the coach will tell you straight up most i mean at least i will any quality coach will tell you straight up exactly what you need to hear yeah and what your kid needs to do but to you know like for me this weekend to have parents be like you're blown out and there's you know, it's not working. And it's like, okay, well, every, every girl is getting an opportunity. And just because we're getting blown out every single game does not mean that these girls aren't performing mm -hmm. because they performed this weekend. Yeah, look at the score. The score doubled every time you had a game. Absolutely. No, and they played hard. They, and played, they played the hard. same team. So it wasn't like it was a different team every time. They played the same team. Yeah. There's only four every, teams in the tournament. So. Yes, we got blown out every single game, which is fine. But you scored but more every all time. Of, all that's not every time, but every game they played better and every game they they tried and they like I said they attempted they gave me one hundred and ten percent so I can't be mad. No, and no parent should be mad. Like yeah, it sucks that we lost, but we've been playing together for two weeks. Yeah, so it's not give them a chance. Yeah, yeah. give them a chance. Be patient. Be patient like we are right now, waiting for our squash. <laughs> our squash almost done. I'm gonna go check it right now. On. Our squash is all cooked up. We're going to spaghettify it. <laughs> like how I did that. Yeah, it's hilarious. So we're gonna get it all. I love spaghetti squash. This is so cool. I've honestly never eaten it. That's not true. You literally made meals. Oh, we've made one meal I know of for sure with spaghetti squash. I think it was somebody else. No, it was absolutely I here. I remember. I remember because I was like, what the heck is this? Okay, so we're going to get this all loosened up here. And then we're going to pour our sauce over the top of it and mix it in a little bit. And then we're going to put it back in the oven for a bit. Mm, look at that. Gosh, good. So good. Uh, mix that in a little bit so we don't run over. All right. I'm going to put it in for about 20 more minutes. Get it all nice and cooked in there. And then it's going to be. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Okay, so here is the final mm, deliciousness. Oh my gosh. Look how good that looks. Look, it looks like the picture even. I <laughs> love it. Look at all that ooey gooeyness with the spaghetti squash. It looks so good. Recording? Mm -hmm. All right. Moment of truth. Shall we try it? It's going to be so freaking hot. So, here's to building awesome teams. Mm. Wow. That's really good. That is so good. You guys, Make try it. it. Make it. It's so good. I think the cream cheese definitely, just adding that little bit, with makes the, it a little more with the tomatoes. 
just gives it a little more creaminess, but it's so good. It tastes like, I mean, the squash is like so buttery. It tastes like almost like a garlic bread. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's almost, so good. It almost is sinful. Like it doesn't, shouldn't be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so moral of our story and thank you for, um, what? Look up at the camera. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm just enthralled with this. Um, just thanks for being with us, building this new recipe, building new teams, creating amazing teams that, um, are positive and learn how to work for what they want and helping parents and coaches and athletes just get a very good, strong mental toughness, understanding that they have to work hard and it's not easy. Yeah. And just like this squash, it takes time. So make sure that you're patient as a parent, as a coach, and as an athlete. It will come in time. You just got to be committed to it, and it'll come to you. So thanks, Cheers. everyone, for coming and watching us make our squash. So we'll see you guys <laughs> next week. I hated it.